All right, now I'm going to be talking about the history of public health, and specifically, we're going to talk about number two, history of public health. And one of the big things I want to talk about is that sanitation and environmental health are key and underlying in public health. It starts off with the Greeks and Romans by practicing community sanitation measures. And you could see these in early civilization times. You can actually even go before the Greeks and Romans and see some, uh, some guidelines and some, some policies that really helped shape uh, health and well-being. And then keeping basically clean water and keeping um, things sanitized was key. And then in the 1840s, the public health really started to take a look at how uh, groups and populations were getting sick based on a disease. And you're going to hear a little bit about Jon Snow and what, what he did to really kind of make public health more of a norm and uh, is one of our considered the father of epidemiology. You'll hear more about him. In the 1970s, the Environmental Protection Agency was found. And I think it's very important to stress that this was a bipartisan movement of both the Republicans and Democrats coming together to work on creating policies to address environmental issues and to create something that's key today, even today, something called environmental justice. Our environment absolutely influences our health and well-being. And then we have the influenza outbreak, and you probably have heard of this, the Spanish flu, but it, worldwide, this was a pandemic that spread. Then we have the invent of the polio with the vaccine that was introduced and it helped eradicate um, polio on in the United States and Western Hemisphere. But the reality is that we still have polio across uh, in certain parts of the world, and we're working on eradicating this. There are examples of diseases that have been completely eradicated through the vaccine, and smallpox is one of those. HIV. HIV is worldwide, um, and it affected 34 4 million people. Um, it went down 20%. Um, and infections starting uh, since 2001. But the reality is this is still a disease that is an infectious disease that is um, very serious and people are very susceptible to it. We have great treatments today in a sense of how to control the disease but not cure it. Biological warfare and preparing for disaster responses is part of public health. And this started, um, we t one of the things we talked about is biological warfare with weapons being used uh, and in biological warfare. And, and people were worried about this with bioterrorism um, and the impact of, for example, releasing a pathogen that could make people sick purposefully. September, that would be considered a man-made disaster. September 20, 2001 is another example of a man-made a disaster when we have terrorist attacks. And then Hurricane Katrina, always being prepared for emergency disasters this is an example of another one that really brought to the forefront of the importance of having an emergency response plan. Policy is another key thing with public health. Um, and one of the wor first world's written uh, health codes is within the Bible. Um, and it really set precedence of really creating some guidelines uh, to really help people stay healthy and safe. And some of these were written and, and still very much followed today. Tobacco laws, uh, laws banning smoking in public places was key, a major gain in public health and reduced the prevalence of lung cancer significantly. And obesity. Think about this. Just even the past few years, we see now that food labeling is coming out and we're starting to promote physical activity. Our environment, our food sizes, um, our ability to access grocery stores, our ability to walk safely in a neighborhood are all impacted by policy, by laws and regulations. And this is something that is key in public health. So which of the following events in public health history was considered, uh, are considered pandemics? And let's see how you respond. 
You're right when you say influenza and polio. These are both examples of pandemics and public health is constantly be looking out for pandemics. All right, that is the end of uh, this brief overview and the next little video is now gonna be on the public health approach. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue with topic number three, the public health approach. And so when we look at the public health approach, we're really constantly surveilling. What is the problem? We're looking at data and evidence to show us that there is a problem. So data analysis is key. Then we look at the risk factors. What is causing this? What is the etiology of this? What is causing this problem? And then we evaluate what works to mitigate or get rid of this problem. We like to go upstream and to prevent it before it occurs. Then after we figure out what works, we like to communicate and tell people how to do it. Implementation. You need to wash your hands. You need to wear a mask. You need to um, do X, Y, and Z to really help keep yourself safe. And this is considered the response. This is the public health approach. Surveillance, looking at the risk factor, looking at interventions, and then implementation about what works. And key in the public health core sciences are different areas. Um, you'll see that people are focusing in on maybe some prevention services. Maybe someone is an epidemiologist and they're studying the disease trends. Maybe someone's in a laboratory and they're working on analyzing the biology and looking at the source of the pathogen, the disease-causing agent. Maybe someone is involved in the informatics and really communicating this and using data and computer science to make sure that people understand. So you might see someone who's in graphic design or is involved in that um, in doing data analysis. And then finally, last but not least, is surveillance, constantly surveilling.